did you know you can create this glowing light spill effect with just a little bit of Lightroom editing. Let me show you how it's done. As always, if you want to follow along, you can download the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. As always, I will be showing you the whole editing process from start to finish. So if you're just here for the glow effect, make sure to check the chapters of the video to quickly navigate to that exact spot. With that being said, let's start with the basic adjustments. I already did apply a little bit of cropping, making this image more like a panoramic scene because this just fits the landscape better. And with the basic adjustments, we want to prepare the image for the following steps, especially the masking. What this means for this scene, I want to kind of fix the overexposed sky on the left side. I want to balance the shadows a little bit and also we need to adjust the white balance. So first off, let's change the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This already helps lessen the contrast very, very slightly and less contrast is beneficial if you want to create a realistic looking glow effect. So the next step for me is to bring down the highlights all the way. And as I do this, you can see we will now be able to see more clouds on the left side of the sky because previously this was just overexposed. Then I'm also going to bring down the shadows. This will add back a little bit of contrast, but I think it's needed in this case. I'm also going to increase the whites for more contrast. And this way I'm kind of spreading the histogram, making sure to cover a nice tonal range from the darkest darks to the brightest highlights. So right around here looks good to me. Then I'm also going to bring up the blacks. This again will bring down the overall contrast and kind of fixing the most unexposed areas of the image this way. There is still a little bit of an exposure. We can see that when we hold on the Alt key and click on the blacks slider. But as you can see, these are areas which are not that important. So I don't have a problem with these being underexposed. All right, exposure wise, it looks much better. You can also see that on the histogram, we do have a nice spread right here. What I want to do next is to fix the white balance because at the moment, this is a really, really cold scene and I want to change that by bringing up the temperature. So let's raise it quite a bit. I personally prefer this image to be super warm, but of course, this is totally up to you what you like for this image. This is looking much better already. Now, finally, I want to bring up the texture, making the whole image a little sharper. I'm also going to bring up the clarity for some more punch, and I'm going to bring down the dehaze. This helps introducing a base level of glow to the image. You can kind of think of it like a very, very subtle autumn glow effect. Just keep in mind, if you bring down the dehaze, this will most likely affect the exposure. So there is a chance you might accidentally overexpose if you have some bright areas in the image. Now I'm also going to bring up the vibrance. I'm going to bring it up a lot since I want this image to be colorful. In fact, I also want to bring up the saturation for even stronger colors. And there we have the image after the basic adjustments. I can show you the comparison to before real quick. And the biggest change obviously being the white balance. But we also have more details in the sky, especially in the brighter areas. And the whole image looks a little bit sharper with a subtle amount of glow to it. All in all, I'm really happy with the basic adjustments. Now let's do some masking. And within the masking, there will be the glow effect added. And let's open up the masking panel. And depending on the image, adding the glow effect will come at different points of the masking process. So for this particular image, I will be adding the glow effect pretty much as the last step of the masking process. First, I want to get a few other things right. That means I'm going to start this with a color range mask. And with this color range mask, I'm going to target the blues of the sky like this. This is looking like a pretty good mask, but what I want to do with this is I want to make the blues of the sky darker. So I don't want to change anything in the foreground like the mountains or the reflection in the water. I'm going to say subtract and I'm going to choose a linear gradient, just covering pretty much most of the image with that linear gradient and we end up with a selection for the upper right corner. Now all I'm doing is to bring down the exposure and this way we 
can add some very, very nice contrast between the blues of the sky and the clouds. Wonderful. I do want to repeat the step, so let's go ahead and create another color range mask, same as before for the blues of the sky. And I'm going to say subtract, choose a linear gradient. Now I'm taking away a little more, so really only the top part is affected. And I'm going to bring down the exposure some more. Wonderful. Then we can also work on the reflection. And this, this is super simple. Just use a linear gradient. I'm going to cover pretty much all of the water surface like this. And what I love to do on reflections like this is to add clarity. This really helps to make the reflection pop as you can see when I bring up the clarity slider. Uh, this might be a bit too much. Let's bring it down a notch just around here. Looks great. We can further work on the contrast between clouds and the rest of the sky using another color range mask. With that color range mask, I'm going to click right in here on this cloud. This should give us a pretty good selection. I do think I want to bring down the refined slider just a bit around here. And what I want to do with this selection is to bring up the whites. I'm not going to deselect anything from the landscape in the foreground because this mask also serves to add a little bit of contrast or punch for these exact areas. So let's raise the whites a bit. And you can see how this affects the contrast in a very nice, pleasing way. All right, almost done with masking. Let's create a sky selection mask. And I'm going to say subtract linear gradient. Now I'm taking away everything that's rather dark. So I'm left with the part on the left side of the sky and this covers pretty much all of the horizon area. I want to target this particular part of the sky and make it warmer to give it more of a sunrise feeling. So how can we do this? That's again really simple. Just bring up the temperature a notch. A little bit is really enough. We don't want to overdo it. Just add a little bit of subtle warmth to that area. Okay. Now let's create another color range mask. And this time I'm clicking right in here on the grass. Perfect selection for all that grass in the center, which I want to make brighter by slightly bringing up the exposure. Again, just adding a bit of contrast to the scene and we're done. Now let's add some glow. For this glow effect, there are a few things to keep in mind. First, we want to have a very bright area. In this case, we have that bright spot in the sky on the left side. Then right next to this bright area, we want to have something dark. In this case, the mountains right next to it. Now I'm going to create a new mask and we are going to choose a radial gradient. Usually I'm making it a pretty long radial gradient, but at the same time, it's rather thin, just like this. Also, I'm going to rotate this radial gradient a little bit, just to be the same as the light direction coming in from outside the image. Then what I want to do is to place the center of this radial gradient outside the image like this. This will help just achieving a more natural looking glow effect with the widest part of this radial gradient being outside the frame. Now what I want to do is to make it a little bigger to kind of stretch more into the image. and really important while the center part of this radial gradient is right at the brightest part of the image. It's also overlapping these dark mountains. And that's super important for the glow effect because what we're actually doing is we are brightening up the darkest parts, not the brightest parts. This will become more clear as I continue with the first step of bringing up the blacks. I'm going to raise them all the way up. And you can see how this will make the mountain tops softer. This doesn't affect the highlights. Or in other words, this will not introduce overexposure. But at the same time, it will make this area appear to be glowing since we are reducing the darkness of the top of the mountains. Let me deactivate the mask so you can see the difference from before to after. So this is a very, very simple glow effect already, but we can improve it some more. Let's go down to the effects tab. And what we can do in here is to use dehaze. We don't want to add dehaze, but we want to bring it down. 
And as I bring it down, the glow effect will get stronger and stronger. Just keep in mind, negative dehaze will affect the brightness of the brightest spots. So be aware of overexposure. Uh, this is a little bit too much negative dehaze. I'm going to bring it down just around here. And just like that, we have a great looking glow effect added on top. Once more, let me deactivate this mask so you can see the difference from before to after. Wonderful. There are other things we can do to improve this glow effect, like bringing down clarity. This will not affect the exposure of this area, but the softness. So bringing down clarity a lot will make this glow effect stronger and you don't have to worry about overexposure. However, in this case, I don't like what the negative clarity is doing on this area, so I'm going to reset this. What I want to do instead is to add uh, some more color in this area. I'm going to click on this color box right here and let's set up the hue first. So somewhere around here and I'm going to bring up the saturation a little bit. Wonderful. And with all of this done, we could think about rotating it a little more, maybe make it a little thicker so the glow effect is a little more obvious. But all in all, I'm quite happy with how this is looking. Of course, we also have to think about the reflection in the foreground. For that, we can simply say add and choose another radial gradient. And I'm going to create one like this, make it just a tiny bit smaller and again, rotate it to fit the light's direction and place it over the mountains like this. If this effect is too strong, you can create a separate radial gradient with different settings. But for this image, I think it's okay this way. And that's how we can create a very effective, beautiful glow effect with some simple Lightroom Classic editing. So we're done with the masking adjustments. Now let's do a bit of color grading. I'm starting in the color mixer and I wanna work on the hue first. What this means is I'm going to bring down the orange hue, which will mostly affect the sky in a very, very gentle way. I'm also going to bring down the yellow hue. This might affect the foreground, but I think this looks great. In fact, I might actually want to bring down the green hue all the way, which will give the grass more of an orange color tone. Of course, this is not natural, but I think it just fits better for the image. So I'm happy with that. I'm also going to bring down the blue hue just a little bit, adding some more aqua tones to the sky this way. And that's about it. Let's head over into the saturation tab. I'm going to bring up orange just to add some more saturation to the sky. I'm also bringing up a yellow for the same effect. And let's bring up a green. Now the center part also has some nice saturation to it. I'm also going to bring up the blue tones very gently. All right, and now let's head into the luminance tab. Here I wanna bring up the yellow luminance. This does change the sky by making it brighter. So be careful adjusting the yellow luminance. Another benefit is it will also make the grass in the foreground brighter. Now let's bring up green as well for more brightness in the foreground. And I'm going to drop blue for more contrast in the sky. Perfect. At this point, we're done with the color mixer. This was quite a big change from before. Now let's continue with a little bit of split toning in the color grading panel. I'm starting with the highlights and obviously we want to improve the warmer tones of the highlights. So I'm going to set up the hue. I'm choosing a very warm color somewhere right here and I'm going to bring up the saturation. That looks great. Now let's also head into the midtones. Again, I'm going with a warm hue somewhere around here and let's bring up the saturation again. Wonderful. Of course, we want to keep a little bit of color contrast so we can use the shadows. And here we can choose a cold hue on the opposite side of the color wheel. And now let's very gently raise the saturation. We don't want to overdo the shadows. We just want to have a hint of that color in here. All right. Finally, I also want to work on the calibration settings. What this means is I'm just going to bring up the saturation of all these sliders a little bit, giving the image some more vibrance this way. And I might even drop the blue primary hue 
because this has a very nice effect on the grass and on the sky, in my opinion. All right, that's looking pretty solid. Now all that's left to do is some sharpening in the detail set. Let's do this. I'm going to drop the radius all the way down. I'm increasing the details all the way up. Then let's apply some masking while holding down the Alt key because the sky don't need any sharpening, just the center part like this. And now let's bring up the amount of sharpening and we are done. So that's it for the Lightroom tutorial about creating this awesome glow effect. If you have any questions about the editing or if you want to add anything, please feel free to write a comment and thank you so much for watching this video.